<laughs> oh, praise the Lord, everybody. You're 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 here with me Thursday night with Bobby Jean. Uh, we weren't sure. <laughs> Bob said he was going to watch me till four o'clock, and if I wasn't doing good, I I wasn't going to be. But uh, I was determined by the grace of the Lord, you know, to be with y'all because cause I love you. And uh, tonight, uh, we're, we're going to read an awful lot. I, w I want you to hang with me. Um, <clears throat> this is uh, something that I noticed um, as I was reading through the Word a long time ago, one of the first times I was reading through the Word. I kept, you know, uh, noticing a Jeroboam, son of Nebat, who caused Israel to sin, and it, it just, you know... So I thought tonight, and I mentioned it last Thursday, we're going to go a little deeper into Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who caused Israel to sin. Um, and and I, think, I think it's very interesting. First of all, Lord God, we know, Heavenly Father, we come before you in Jesus' name. Lord, we know without you, we can do nothing. Jesus, you said, in John 15, the last part of verse 5, you said, without me, you can do nothing. So, sir, we're coming before you. We're asking you, Lord, for wisdom. In Ephesians chapter 1, verses 15 through 23, Paul prayed for the Ephesians. He prayed. And Lord God, we, we pray in Jesus' name that you would enlighten us, that the spirit of wisdom would, would guide us through the word tonight that you would bring out the hidden things, Father. Write your word in our hearts that we might not sin against thee. Help us, Father, in all ways that we have need of thee. Lord God, we need your strength. Father, I haven't heard from Carol Payton. Father, I thank you that, that Paula is doing better. I thank you, Father, for all of your children, sir, all of them. Father, we're just so grateful for all that you're doing, and you see all of those that have lost loved ones and that are suffering through that pain. Lord, we're just looking unto Jesus. I pray, Father, that you would lift every heavy heart. I speak in Jesus' name to every heart. In Jesus' name, be thou made whole. Holy, help us, O oh Lord God. We'll not fail to give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory. For you alone are worthy, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. <coughs> <coughs> I thank y'all for your prayers. I'm not a hundred percent yet, but but the Lord is. <laughs> so we're just we're gonna look unto Jesus. Um, I I was. Uh, uh, we're gonna start in uh, First Kings, and I'm just praying that the Lord will lead us. And like I said, we're gonna do a, a lot of reading. And I I just. You know, the first, you know, uh, the first time I, I read about this, uh, Solomon, when you're reading in first Samuel, you know, that, that, uh, not first, that's, uh, <laughs> sorry. But anyway, when you start, uh, reading about Solomon, how that he prayed, he didn't pray to have riches. He prayed that to have he didn't pray for riches. He prayed for wisdom. We used to sing a little song in Sunday school. King Solomon didn't pray for riches. King Solomon didn't pray for fame. Oh, no. King Solomon prayed to have the wisdom that brought him fame and riches just the same. So uh, as, as children, you learn... Uh, these Bible stories in song, it kind of sticks with you. So we're in uh, 1 Kings, the 11th chapter, and we're going to read. Uh, I just wanted to mention Solomon. It's very interesting. Uh, I hope you can hang with me. 
it says right here, and you can read the whole story, and please do, but 1 Kings chapter 11 says, but King Solomon loved many strange women together with the daughter of Pharaoh, women of, Mo of the Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Zidonians, and Hittites. Now, those of you that have studied know that that's the ones that God uh, delivered into the hands of Israel, okay? But we're not going to go there tonight. But these were the enemies of Israel. And it said, verse 2, of the nations concerning which the Lord said unto, see, unto the children of Israel, now I'm going to read that again, of the nations concerning which the Lord said unto the children of Israel, ye shall not go in to them, neither shall they come in unto you, for they surely, for surely they will turn away your heart after their gods. Solomon clave unto these in love. And he had 700 wives, princesses, and 300 concubines, and his wives turned his heart away. Hallelujah. Honey, we, we, uh, Gary's been teaching about don't be distracted when he was saying about Elijah going up in the whirlwind, <laughs> you know, he said the horses and the chariots was a distraction. Okay. We'll see. Anyway, uh, we cannot afford to be distracted at this time. And we have got to keep our eyes looking unto Jesus the author and the finisher of our faith. And even though Solomon was one of the wisest men that ever walked the earth, you know, besides, of course, Jesus Christ himself, it said, verse 5, For Solomon went after Ashtaroth, the goddess of the Zidonians, after Milcom, the abomination of the Ammonites, I'm not sure I, I'm pronouncing these. I'm not, I don't study false gods too much. I know some folks do. And if that's where God's got you, then you, amen. <laughs> Verse six, and Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord. Can you imagine Solomon, King Solomon? And this kind of knocked my hat in the creek. I have to tell you, it said, and Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord and went not fully after the Lord, as David, his as David his father. Okay, verse seven. And then did Solomon build in high place for Chemosh the abomination of Moab in the hill that is before Jerusalem, and for Moloch the abomination of the children of Ammon. And likewise did he for all his strange wives, setting up false gods right near Jerusalem, which burnt incense and sacrificed unto their gods. So all of his strange wives burnt incense to other gods. And then, of course, verse 9, And the Lord was angry with Solomon because his heart was turned from the Lord God of Israel, which hath appeared unto him twice. I'll tell you, when God shows you stuff, and you know, it, it's good to get close to the Lord, but getting close to the Lord comes with a responsibility to where much is, to whom much is given, much is required. Okay? Uh, it said, verse 10, and had commanded him concerning this thing that he should not go after other gods. But he kept not that which the Lord commanded. Verse 11, Wherefore the Lord said unto Solomon, For as much as, now I want you to listen to this close, For as much as this is done of thee, and thou hast not kept my covenant and my statutes, which I have commanded thee, I will surely rend, that's take away, tear, rend, I'm going to take, tear away, 
I'm going to rend the kingdom from thee. Now, you'll notice as you're reading through the word and you read the King James, it said they rent their garments. That, that meant when uh, they would tear as a sign of grief, they would rip their garments. So when the Lord said to, uh, to Solomon here, he said, I will rend, I will rend it out of thine hand. I, no, pardon me, verse 12. <laughs> I need to stay with me. Notwithstanding, in, okay, verse 11, hold he help us, Lord. Wherefore the Lord said unto Solomon, for as much as this is done of thee, and thou hast not kept my covenant and my statutes, which I have commanded thee, I will surely rend the kingdom from thee, and will give it to thy servant. That is very important. Don't forget that. Verse 11. He said, I'm going to take it, rip it, take it away from you, and I'm going to give it to your servant. Notwithstanding, in thy days I will not do it for David thy father's sake. You see what serving the Lord puts a covering over your children? There's so much to see here. I will not do it for David thy father's sake, but I will rend it out of the hand of thy son. Howbeit I will not rend away all the kingdoms, but will give one tribe to thy son for David my servant's sake, and for Jerusalem's sake, which I have chosen. So we'll see here that there's he gave one for David and one for Jerusalem. It ended up the tribe of Judah and the tribe of Benjamin. We're going to see this. And the Lord stirred up, verse 14, the Lord stirred up an adversary unto Solomon, Hadad the Edomite, and he was of the king's seed in Edom. Okay, so we're going to go to verse 23. Okay, 1 Kings uh, eleven twenty-three. And God stirred him up another adversary. Okay. Now, so we're seeing, uh, I want you to please walk with me to, um, help Lord. I am not a hundred percent and I apologize. Thank you, Jesus. Ah, thank you, sir. Isaiah, <laughs> I just want to read you this because it doesn't matter who you are. And that's what I hope you're seeing here. You know, King Solomon, it, do, it doesn't matter who you are. You have to keep, you have, when you ask Jesus to forgive you of all your sins, you have come into a blood covenant with the Lord God Almighty. Okay. And we need to keep that covenant. But also, we see here, you know, which a lot of folks may not agree with, but, you know, this, I'm just giving you what the Word of God says in Isaiah 63, and we're seeing it here by King Solomon, and we're, it says in Isaiah 63, 10, it says, but they rebelled and vexed his Holy Spirit, therefore he was turned to be their enemy and fought against them. Now, you'll notice it said in verse 7, Isaiah 63, verse 7, said, I will mention the loving kindness of the Lord. And one of these days, uh, we'll go over to Psalms 107 and we'll see the loving kindness of the Lord. Through, If you'll read Psalms 107, you'll see that the loving kindness of the Lord was when they he corrected them. You'll see that in Hebrews. He God corrects his children. Bob was mentioned in that Sunday. He corrects his children. Uh, verse 7, Isaiah 63, verse 7. I will mention the loving kindness of the Lord and the praises of the Lord according to all that the Lord hath bestowed on us and the great goodness toward the house of Israel which he hath bestowed on them according to his mercies and according to the multitude of his loving kindness. For he said, surely they are my people 
children that will not lie. So he was their savior. In all their affliction, he was afflicted. And the angel of his presence saved them. And his love and in his pity, he redeemed them and bare them and carried them all the days of old. Hallelujah. I pray that a lot. You know, that he carried them. Lord, you carried them all the days of old. Lord, I know you're going to carry us. He said, uh, and carried them all the days of old, verse 10. But they rebelled. Do you see this? But they rebelled and vexed his Holy Spirit. Therefore, he was turned to be their enemy and fought against them. And it says, God, uh, God hates pride. God resists the proud and gives grace unto the humble. Honey, these things are real, and, and we need to know that. All right, let's 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 go all the way back to uh, 1 Kings, and we'll see here. And I want you to remember this where uh, in uh, 1 Kings 11 uh, that Ahia, uh, we're going to, we're going to go to 11, 26, 1 Kings 11, verse 26, uh, walk with me through the word, I, I love you, and Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, the Ephrathite of Zereda, Solomon's servant, now I showed you how that God raised up adversaries against Solomon, and I read you how that Ahiah had, uh, well, we're, we're going to read it. Okay. Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, the Ephrathite of Zerida, Solomon's servant. Now, we see that the Lord was angry, okay, in, in chapter, chapter 11, wherefore the Lord said unto Solomon, 1 Kings Chapter 11, verse 11. Wherefore the Lord said unto Solomon, For as much as this is done of thee, and thou hast not kept my covenant and my statutes, which I have commanded thee, I will surely rend, take away, rend the kingdom from thee, and will give it to thy servant. Go to verse 26. And Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, the Ephrathite of Zerida, Solomon's servant, whose mother's name was Zerudah, however he says, Zeru, Zerua, the a widow woman, even he lifted up his hand against the king. So we see here that Jeroboam was raised up also against Solomon. So all of the, the it says, and maybe you've read it, the curse causeless does not come. We get ourselves in trouble and we have got to cry unto the Lord and repent and come back into good standing. Remember, I've told you so many times about the difference between condemnation and Holy Ghost conviction. Okay. God is reaching out saying, come, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, come unto me and I'll give you rest. Okay. Holy Ghost conviction says, ah, who do you think you are? So we see that we have to come unto the Lord. And I have to do like Gary. I hope this is making sense. Uh, I read you in Ezekiel chapter 3 uh, last Thursday, and I'm trying to connect all these dots for you. And it said, uh, Jeroboam was Solomon's servant. And verse 27, and this was the cause that he lifted up his hand against the king. Solomon built Melo and repaired the breaches of the city of David, his father. And verse 28, and the man Jeroboam was a mighty man of valor. And Solomon, seeing the young man, that he was industrious, he made him ruler over all the charge of the house of Joseph. And it came to pass at that time when Jeroboam went out of Jerusalem, now listen close, that the prophet Ahiah 
the Shilonite found him in the way, and when he had clad himself with a new garment, and they too were alone in the field, that Ahiah caught the new garment. So in other words, he caught the new garment that Jeroboam had on. Okay, hang with me. And uh, Ahiah caught the new garment that was on him and rent it, tore it, ripped it, rent it, ripped it into 12 pieces. And he said unto Jeroboam, take thee 10 pieces. For thus saith the Lord, the God of Israel, behold, I will rend, take out the kingdom out of the hand of Solomon. Remember, we just read this. And I will give thee 10 tribes to thee. But he shall have one tribe for my servant David's sake and for Jerusalem's sake, the city which I have chosen out of all the tribes of Israel. Because they have forsaken me and have worshipped Ashtaroth, the goddess of the Zidonians, Chemosh, the god of the Moabites, and Milcom, the god of the children of Ammon, which have not walked in my ways to do that, which is right in mine eyes and to keep my statutes and my judgments as David, his father, how be it verse 34, I will not take the whole kingdom out of his hand, but I will make him prince all the days of his life for David, my servant's sake, whom I chose because he kept my commandments and my statutes. Do you see how important your obedience is to your children? He's made promises to the children's seed and the children's seed's seed. So your children and your grandchildren, and as they follow the Lord, their children and their grandchildren, and it goes on and on as you follow the Lord. It's so important for your children's sake. But I will take, verse 35, I will take the kingdom out of his hand and will give it to thee even ten tribes. And unto his son, I will give one tribe that David, my servant, may have a light always before me in Jerusalem, the city which I have chosen me to put my name there. And I will take thee and thou shalt reign according to all that thy soul desirest and shall be king over Israel. Now listen to this close. This, see, we wonder why God has made many promises and they don't seem to come to pass. There is a very f- small two-letter word a lot of times when God gives you a prophecy. If you are willing and obedient, you will eat good of the land. If you follow in my ways, if you do what I say. But we see here that Solomon didn't. David did, and God kept him a light, you know, and didn't take everything away because of David's obedience, okay? But he said, now, this he's saying to Jeroboam, the son of Nebat. He said, in uh, 1 Kings chapter 11, Verse 38, I just, I just pray that this ministers to you. And it shall be, if thou wilt hearken, diligently listen. I've said many times, to hearken is not just hearing. Because he's hearing this. Jeroboam is hearing the prophet, but he didn't hearken. Hear and obey. So it's not, you know, you have to hear and obey. Hearing only doesn't get it done. Amen. If, and it shall be, if thou wilt hearken unto all that I command thee and wilt walk in my ways and do that, it, and do that is right in my sight to keep my statues and my commandments as David, my servant, did, then I will be with thee and will build thee a sure house as I built for David. This is a big promise that God is making to Jeroboam. So what in the world went wrong? This is what I'm trying to show you tonight. 
Thank you, Jesus. I'll make thee a sure house, as I built for David, and will give Israel unto thee. So you wonder how in the world that this uh, <laughs> Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, an Ephrathite ended up to be king of Israel. Come on now. And God made him this promise. And I will, verse, uh, it said, I will build thee a sure house as I built for David and will give Israel unto thee, verse 39, and I will for this afflict the seed of David, but not forever. Now that was worth tuning in for. God will not cast you away forever. You have to turn unto the Lord. Now I don't care what your condition is tonight. If you turn unto the Lord, I don't care how far. Some folks don't even believe in backsliding, but Israel backslid. <laughs> we see where a lot of folks in the word of God, they didn't continue on and they made the Lord angry, but not forever. Hallelujah, hallelujah, not forever. Honey, if you turn unto the Lord, he, it says that if you look unto Jesus, Lord, help me. I wish I was more with it tonight. It, it, when you're tired and weak, get scriptures, Lord Jesus, I need you. <laughs> uh, he, he said that that he would not cast off forever. That is such a pressure. Draw nigh unto me. That was a promise from God in James. Draw nigh unto me. If you draw nigh unto the Lord, he will draw nigh unto you. Honey, that's a precious promise. Thank you, Jesus. I know I can't do this on my own. <laughs> Hallelujah. But if you draw, not forever he won't. And if you turn unto the Lord, you draw nigh unto God, he will draw nigh unto you. In verse 40, Solomon sought therefore to kill Jeroboam. Okay. Just like, just like Saul did when God took the, the kingdom from Saul uh, King Saul and, and was given it to David, okay? And, and this time and time again, you know, we need to see these Bible patterns because Bible patterns don't change. He said, I, the Lord thy God, change not. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. That which angered him before angers him now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, but not forever, thank God. <laughs> okay, verse 40, Solomon sought therefore to kill Jeroboam, and Jeroboam arose and fled into Egypt unto Shishak, king of Egypt, and was in Egypt until the death of Solomon. Uh, and the rest of the acts of Solomon and all that he did and his wisdom, hallelujah, are they not written in the books of the Acts of Solomon. Okay, verse 42. And the time that Solomon reigned in Jerusalem over Israel was 40 years. Verse 43. And Solomon slept with his fathers and was buried in the city of David, his father. And Rehoboam, his son, reigned in his stead. Now, walk with me. We're in chapter 12, verse 1. Rehoboam went to Shechem, for all Israel were come to Shechem to make him king. And it came to pass when Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who was yet in Egypt, heard of it, for he was fled from the presence of King Solomon, and Jeroboam dwelled in Egypt, verse 3, that they sent and called him. And Jeroboam and all the congregation of Israel came and spake unto Rehoboam, saying, Thy father made our yoke grievous. Now, therefore, make thou the grievous service of thy father and his heavy yoke, which he put upon us, lighter, and we will serve thee. And he said unto them, Depart. Yet for three days, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to think on it. What he should have been doing was praying on it, but he was thinking on it. 
Depart yet for three days and come again. And the people departed. And King Rehoboam consulted with the old men that stood before Solomon, his father, while he yet lived. So we're talking about the counselors, the men that was with Solomon, one of the wisest men, although he did get stupid there for a while or whatever you want to call it. He didn't, know, you know, I, I say stupid because it is not smart. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of a living God. So we see here that these men that were with Solomon while he yet lived, and he said, how do you advise that I may answer this? What do you think about this? And he was counseling with the counselors that sat with Solomon. And they said, uh, verse 7, they spake unto him, if thou wilt be a servant unto this people this day and wilt and wilt serve them and answer them and speak good words to them, then they will be servants forever. Hallelujah. Did I not just tell you God gives grace. God resists the proud and gives grace unto the humble. So here we have this young upstart here, Rehoboam, verse 8. But he, Rehoboam, forsook the counsel of the old men, which they had given him, and consulted with the young men that were grown up with him. He went to his buddies. <laughs> if, they haven't, if they're not any older than you, haven't been anywhere you haven't been, and done anything, how in the world are they going to give you any wise counsel? This is kids going to kids. And I've taught this many times in Sunday school, especially to teenagers. You know, if, you know, you need to listen to the folks that know what they're talking about. Time and time again, I've heard, you know, I know you're an expert and I know that you know how to do this, but I, I, I want to do it my way, you know, and then they get in trouble. I mean, this happens still today. Kids, younger folks, young men, instead of listening to the counsel of the old men that have, are experts in their field, they go and they, t <sighs> and, and I'll tell you to me, it, it's so frustrating. It's actually, it's like maddening. It's like, ah, you know, but we still see it. Oh, I, I know that you know what you're talking about, but I want to do it this way. Okie dokie then. <laughs> So the older men said, if you will be a servant to this people this day and will serve them and answer them and speak good words to them, they will be thy servants forever. But he forsook the counsel of the old men, consulted with the young men, the young men being young men. And a lot of you guys will understand this. You that are older, well, yeah, yeah. And now they say boys will be boys. Verse 9, so he said unto them, to these younger guys, what counsel give ye that I may answer this people <laughs> who have spoken to me saying, make the yoke which thy father put on us lighter. And the young men that were grown up with him spake unto him saying, thus shalt thou speak unto this people that spake unto thee saying thy father made our yoke heavy but make thou it lighter unto us thou shalt <laughs> thus shalt thou say unto them oh my little finger shall be thicker than my father's loins that sounds like a kid standing up in pride and verse 11, and now whereas my father did lay you a heavy yoke, I will add to your yoke. And my father chastened you with whips, I will chase you with scorpions. Ah. Verse 12, so Jeroboam and all the people that came to Rehoboam the third day as the king had appointed, saying, Come to me again the third day. And the king answered the people roughly. So Rehoboam forsook the council, the wise council. 
He forsook the, the old men's counsel that they gave him, verse 14, and spake to them after the counsel of the young men, saying, My father made your yoke heavy. I will add your yoke. My father also chastened you with whips. I will chasten you with scorpions. Wherefore the kings hearkened, King Rehoboam hearkened not unto the people. Now listen closely, verse 15. For the cause was from the Lord that he might perform his saying, which he spake by Ahiah, we read that, the Shilonite unto Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, Solomon's servant. So when all Israel saw that the king hearkened not unto them, and the people answered the king, saying, What portion have we in David? Neither have we inheritance. And the son of Jesse, To your tents, O Israel. Now see to thine own house, David. So Israel departed unto their tents. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm sorry. But as for the children of Israel, which dwelt in the cities of Judah, Rehoboam reigned over them. Then King Rehoboam sent Ad Adoram, who was over the tribute, and all Israel stoned him with stones that he died. They, you know, <coughs> I apologize. So we see that they they uh, they weren't gonna respect Rehoboam or anybody that Rehoboam sent. And all Israel stoned him with stones that he died. We're in verse eighteen. Therefore, King Rehoboam made speed to get him up to his chariot and flee to Jerusalem. I guess he did. Verse 19, so Israel rebelled against the house of David unto this day. And it came to pass when all Israel heard that Jeroboam was come again, that they sent and called unto him the congregation and made him king over Israel. There was none that followed the house of David, but the tribe of Judah. You'll notice if there was 12 tribes and 10 <laughs> went with Jeroboam, that that left the house of Judah and the house of Benjamin. But you can study that out. Verse 21. And when Rehoboam was come to Jerusalem, he assembled all the house of Judah with the tribe of Benjamin. See, there it is. And hundred and four score thousand chosen men, which were warriors, to fight against the house of Israel, to bring the kingdom again to Rehoboam, the son of Solomon. But the word of God, verse 22, came unto Shemaiah, Shem, however you say that, I'm sorry, I'm not 100%, Shemaiah, the man of God, saying, Speak unto Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, king of Judah, and say unto the house of Judah and Benjamin. See? So, Rehoboam, there was two tribes under Rehoboam, king of Judah, and there was ten under Israel. So you see here, this Israel split, and you wondered why there was a king over Judah and a king over Israel. Well, this is one of the reasons I brought you here so you could see plainly what had happened. Disobedience and rebellion and idolatry, okay? Ver and uh, verse 24, Thus saith the Lord, Ye shall not go up nor fight against your brethren, the children of Israel. Return every man to his house, for this thing is from me. You better be able to hear the Lord so you're not touching God's anointed. Let, let me take you over here. And it says in Psalms, uh, thank you, Lord. <laughs> Psalms 105. 
and verse uh, 14 and 15, he suffered no man to do them wrong. Yea, he reproved kings for their sakes, saying, touch not mine anointed and do my prophets no harm. Honey, we've got to obey the Lord. We've got to be careful in this thing. And you'll notice in the book of Acts, when they saw, they said, hey, we, we'd we better not come against these guys because if they're speaking by the word of the Lord, now you'll see this is another Bible pattern that, you know, God said, hey, these are mine. Don't touch them. So we see when God said, verse uh, 1 Kings eleven twenty four. For this thing is from me. They hearkened therefore unto the word of the Lord and returned to depart according to the word of the Lord. Thank God. <laughs> Verse 25. Now listen to this. Then Jeroboam built Shechem in Mount Ephraim and dwelt therein and went out from thence and built Penuel. Verse 26. And Jeroboam said in his heart, listen, Jeroboam said in his heart, <coughs> uh, he said in his heart, now shall the kingdom return unto the house of David. So we see that Jeroboam didn't listen to the word of the Lord. He didn't believe God, that God was going to set him up. He said in his heart, oh, I better do it my way. <laughs> you see this? If this people, verse 27, go up to do sacrifice in the house of the Lord at Jerusalem, the way they're supposed to, then shall the heart of this people turn again unto their Lord, even unto Rehoboam, king of Judah, and they shall kill me and go again to Rehoboam, king of Judah. Wherefore, the king, King Jeroboam, took counsel and made two calves of gold. Does this ring any bells? Golden calves? <laughs> and said unto them, it is too much. Do you see here? He said, it's too much for you to go up to Jerusalem. That's really going to be kind of hard. You know, just come over here. It's going to be a lot easier. Does this sound like anything the devil tries to ensnare folks with even today? Oh, you don't have to obey the Lord. You don't have to do it exactly the way the Lord said. <laughs> and he made two calves of gold and said, It is too much for you to go up to Jerusalem. We're in verse 28. Behold thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. Whoa. If that doesn't strike you, oh, these are your gods. And he set the one in Bethel, and the other he set in Dan. Now, if you'll remember, in, in uh, Genesis 49, I, I'm just going to go over here for a second, because I want to connect all these dots. I can't connect them all tonight. But Genesis 49, you'll see that the Lord spake, Jacob called Genesis 49 unto his sons and said, gather yourselves together that I may tell you that which will befall you in the last days. So he's telling his sons what God had spoken to him about them. And you'll see in verse uh, 16, Dan shall judge his people as one of the tribes of Israel. Dan shall be a serpent by the way and adder in the path that biteth the horse heels so that the rider rider shall fall backward i have waited for thy salvation o lord so we see that dan the tribe of dan will also see in the book of revelation that when they're talking about there's no tribe of dan manasseh we're, we'll get into that maybe later but if you'll study that i believe it's in revelation chapter 7 that there's no tribe of dan there, the tribe of Manasseh is there. And this is why I'm trying to explain to you, because these were all questions to me, you know. And the pure gold, you've got to dig deep. And it, and it takes, well, probably maybe not for you, but for me, it took decades of hard, rigorous studying, okay? And I'm trying to lay it out for you 
and just serve it to you and and help you to understand because I know a lot of people don't read the Bible because they say they don't understand it. So we see here that Israel split, went under Jeroboam, and Jeroboam was, as it were, the first king of Israel, okay? And then we see the, the tribe of Judah and Benjamin for David's sake. So we see here where there was a king of Judah and a king of Israel. And it stayed that way for a long time, but not forever. <laughs> it says, verse 28, first, 1 Kings 11, uh, pardon me, 1 Kings 12, verse 28, whereupon the king, King Jeroboam, son of Nebat, took counsel and made two calves of gold and said unto them, it's too much for you to go up to Jerusalem. Behold thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. Ooh. And he set one in Bethel and the other in Dan. And this thing became sin. For the people of Israel went to worship before one, even unto Dan. So it came out the way that God spoke through Jacob to his son, Dan, which became, of course, the tribe of Dan. And he made in house in high places and made priests of the lowest of the people, which were not of the sons of Levi. They weren't Le the, of the tribe of Levi, the one that God said, you, you're not going to have any inheritance but me. You take charge of the temple you take charge of the offerings and the sacrifices unto the Lord. But Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who caused Israel to sin, had a better idea. Oh, it's too much. Don't do that. It just, you know, uh, do, do, are you seeing this? I pray you're seeing this. And Jeroboam ordained a feast the eighth month on the 15th day of the month, like under the feast that is in Judah. And he offered upon the altar, so did he in Bethel, sacrifices, un sacrificing unto the calves that he made. And he placed in Bethel the priest of the high places which he had made. And he offered upon the altar which he had made in Bethel the fifteenth day of the eighth month, even the month which he had devised of his own heart. He like... Now, please remember that he made it that way. He was giving them an alternative to obeying the Lord. Honey, the, the enemy, your own carnal mind, however you want to say it, there will always be an alternative to doing what God said, an easy way out. Because like we, Bob and Gary and, and Dennis, so many have said, if you're going to serve God, it is not going to, appeal to your flesh you're going to have to deny yourself take up your cross like jesus said a lot of folks don't like that preaching and you know to take up your cross and follow me but that's what jesus said and it's still the same today and what did jesus do he died on his cross we're going to have to die to ourselves, die to our own will die to our own nature and come forth in christ that's the only way there's going to be alternatives. There's going to be things that you can do, but it, it will be very detrimental to your spiritual health. And if, if I, I may not even finish this, but it happened that God spoke evil against Jeroboam, the son of Nebat and it ended up and uh, that God, let, let me see if I can find just, da, 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 da. I, uh, let's turn to chapter 13 and, whew, no, sorry. Uh, I'm looking for it said that he smote him. The Lord actually smote Jeroboam. 
uh, in uh, 1 Kings 13, 24, it said, uh, verse 33, After this thing, Jeroboam returned not from his evil way, but made again the lowest of the people priest of the high places, who would, whosoever would, he consecrated him and became one of the priests of the high places. This thing became sin under the house of Jeroboam, even to cut it off and to destroy it from off the face of the earth. He was cut off and his entire house. Do you see how important your obedience to God is to your children? I, I'm sorry. I have got so much more to, to, to go with you. Uh, walk with me. I'm not going to give you all the scriptures, but 2 Chronicles, 2 Chronicles, chapter 13 we'll see here okay and then and then uh and it's about all i'm going to be able to to hang with you tonight <laughs> but by the grace of god it says in second chronicles it says uh, verse 1 second chronicles chapter 13 verse 1 now in the 18th year of king Jeroboam became, be, pardon me, help me, Lord. Uh, we're almost done here, guys. Now, in the 18th year of King Jeroboam, began up Abiah to reign over Judah. See, and, and, I, and those of you that are wondering, I don't understand. There's Israel, and isn't the children of Israel the children of Israel? How come there's a king of Israel and there's a king of Judah? I don't get it. Trust me, it bothered me for a lot of years. So I'm trying to show you who, how, why, what, okay? And he reigned three years in Jerusalem. His mother's name also was Micaiah, the daughter of U Uriel, of Gibeah, and there was war between Abiah and Jeroboam. And Abiah set the battle in array with an army of valiant men of war, 400,000 chosen men. Jeroboam also set the battle in array against him, 800,000 chosen men, being mighty men of valor. And Abiah stood, verse 4, upon Mount Zimmeram, which is in Mount Ephraim, and said, Hear me, thou Jeroboam, and all Israel. Ought ye not, ought ye not to know? Why don't you know that the Lord God of Israel gave the kingdom over Israel to David forever, even to him and his sons by a covenant of salt? Yet Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, the servant of Solomon, the son of David, is risen up and hath rebelled against his Lord. But you see, you have a greater understanding when you're reading through the word, how, what, why, where, whatever. <laughs> it said, and there are gathered unto him vain men, the children of Belial, servants see they served false gods and and solomon you i hope you're getting all this just keep praying for me we're almost done and there were gathered unto him vain men the children of belial and have strengthened themselves against rehoboam the son of solomon when rehoboam was young and tender-hearted and could not withstand them. And now, this is Abiah speaking this, and now you think to withstand the kingdom of the Lord in the hand of the sons of David, and ye be a great multitude, and there are with you golden calves which Jeroboam made for you, gods, have, verse 9, 
Have ye not cast out the priests of the Lord, the sons of Aaron and the Levites, and have made you priests after the manner of nations of other lands, so that whosoever cometh to consecrate himself with a young bullock and seven rams, the same may be a priest of them that are no gods? I hope you're seeing this. But as for us, the Lord our God, as for us, the Lord is our God. Hallelujah. So they were serving other gods. There was twice as many of them, but they were serving other gods, not the Yahweh of Israel. And they were doing it their own way, not the way the Lord told them. But as for us, verse 10, the Lord is our God. And we have not forsaken him. And the priests which minister unto the Lord are the sons of Aaron. And the Levites wait upon their businesses. And they burn unto the Lord. Capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. The Yahweh, the Lord God of Israel. And they burn unto the Lord every morning and every evening. Sacrifices, sweet incense, and the showbread. Verse 12. And behold, read the whole thing. And behold, God himself is with us for our captain and his priest with sounding trumpets to cry alarm against you, O children of Israel. Fight ye not against the Lord God for... Of your fathers, for ye shall not prosper. You coming against the Lord's anointed, you will not prosper. But Jeroboam caused an ambushment to come about behind them. So they were before, and the ambush was behind. And when Judah looked back, and behold, the battle before and behind, they cried unto the Lord. Honey, I don't care what's going on in your life. If you cry unto the Lord, if you have faithfully served the Lord, the Lord is our God. The Lord is our strength. The Lord is our supply. Hallelujah. So they cried unto the Lord and the priest sounded the trumpets. Then the men of Judah gave a shout as and as the men of Judah shouted, it came to pass that God smote Jeroboam and all Israel before Abiah and Judah. It, I don't care how hopeless the battle looks. Time, this is another Bible pattern. They that are with us are more than they that are with them. Honey, God, the Lord is our God. We will triumph. Because of the Lord. It doesn't matter what the battle is. Okay. I love y'all. And I believe that's all for tonight. I apologize that I'm not 100%. I apologize. Uh, but by the grace of the Lord. By the grace of the Lord, we got through enough of this. Now, and you know, we read uh, 1 Kings chapter 13, where jo Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who caused Israel to sin, how he'd set up those golden calves. And then the man of God came out of Judah. Then the old prophet lied. You know, we, we did that last Thursday. God bless you. I hope you're getting all this. I love you. Mwah. Write your word in our hearts that we might not sin against thee. Give us understanding, O Lord. Cause the wisdom, cause the spirit of wisdom, according to Ephesians chapter 1. Cause the spirit of wisdom. Help us, O Lord. Give us wisdom and understanding and knowledge that we might not sin against thee. Help us to understand these things, O Lord. <coughs> In Jesus' name, I love you. And as God gives me strength, I'll see you, Lord willing, Sunday. 
and maybe again next Thursday. <laughs> God bless you. Good night.